Hi guys, this is going to be the tutorial that's going to show you how to make one of these birds of a feather slouch chats. And all you'll need for this project is a 5mm hook or a size H hook, uh, a tapestry needle to do your sewing, which I have here, and a pair of scissors. And you will be needing two different colors. This one I used variegated which is this and I also used a solid color of white you can choose two solid colors which I did for I don't know if you noticed or noticed I don't know if you saw the fingerless gloves I did with this pattern but I used in just solid colors so I decided this time to try variegated so you just need two skeins of two different colors one can be variegated, but I do recommend when you're making the birds that you choose a solid color. And I used these two to make this hat. And they were both full skeins at the time. So you, as you can see, once the hat was over, I have about half of the variegated left. And this one is almost full. I barely used any of it, really. So, it's going to take less than uh, two. I, I probably have enough to make two hats using these two. So, we'll get the supplies that you need and let's get started. So, what you need to do to start off is to chain 70. So, chain 70 loosely. Don't uh, don't make it so tight. And like I said, this yarn I'm using is a bit thicker, but it's just in hopes that you can see the stitches and everything better. So just chain 70, and I will see you back here in a moment. Okay. I only chained 30, but for your hat, you need to chain 70. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm only going to chain 30 just so I can show you what you need to do next. So what you do is you layer chain flat. Make sure you can follow it down with your thumb like this. Just to make sure that the chain is not twisted. And when you get to the end, you want to put your hook into the single loop at the top, leaving you two loops on the other side. And then whenever you turn your chain like this, to form your ring, your two loops will end up at the top. Now all you're going to do is just slip stitch in that beginning chain. Now you have two stitches on the top of the first chain. Now for the next is you want a single crochet in the stitch to the left or if you're left handed to the right of the beginning stitch. So just next to you'll go under the top loop only and you'll single crochet. And I'm going to hide my tail as I go. So you're going to do a single crochet. And you're going to continue using just that top loop and single crochet in each stitch around. And you began with 70 but when you single crochet into the next stitch here, you'll have 69 at the end. You should have 69 stitches at the end of this round. So just continue to single crochet all the way around, and I'll see you back here in a moment. Okay, I just came up to the very last stitch. This is where we slip stitched into, and this is our very first single crochet of the round. When you've got your ring done, you want to lay it flat and make sure that it's all going one direction. You don't want any twist in this ring. And what you'll do is you'll skip this single crochet, I mean the slip stitch, and go right into the first single crochet of the round. So I'm going to skip this stitch and single crochet going under both loops. And do a single crochet 
and count your stitches. Make sure that you have 69. I'm going to place my marker, marking the beginning of my round, my very first stitch of the round. So for round two of our rim, you want to single crochet into the first seven. And you single crochet in your first single crochet of the round, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So single crochet seven, and then you want to do a single crochet decrease. And how you do that is you go into the next stitch and pull up a loop, and then you go into the following stitch and pull up a loop. Now you have loops coming from two stitches, and then you yarn over and you pull through all three loops. And then you want to repeat that all the way around. Single crochet, seven, and then do one single crochet decrease. So I have three, four, five, six, and seven, and two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I want to do my single crochet decrease. Just like that. And you want to repeat that all the way around. Single crochet seven, and then do a single crochet decrease. And you'll want to repeat that until you get back up to your marker here, your first stitch of the round. Okay, I'm back up to my first stitch of the round. And for round three, you're going to be repeating what you did in round, for round two. So if you, you single crochet it all the way up to the end, and you have seven stitches, then the next stitch do a decrease. I, I started with 30 stitches just for this tutorial, so I have three single crochets leading up to my end. So I need to single crochet four more before I do my single crochet decrease. So just continue on like you did last time. I mean the last row, single crochet seven, and then do a single crochet decrease. And when you get back to almost the end of your row, count your stitches. You need to stop decreasing once you have 58 stitches. And once you reach 58 stitches, just single crochet the rest of the round. Okay, I just finished up round three. Make sure you have 58 stitches. Don't forget to count, it's very important. Now, if you're making this hat for a man and 58 stitches is going to be too tight around his head, you should check. And um, if, if he lives with you or you're near him, uh, check to see if 58 stitches would be too tight, because if it is, this is the, the time that you can adjust it to fit the person. But the good thing about doing the rim the way we are now is because even if later on you find out that your hat is too tight, you can loosen it some. So, and if you are short on the yarn that you used, you can just do one row less of, uh, you know, you can just do four for the band instead of five. So, once you get to the end of round three, and you have your 58 stitches or whatever stitches that you, you have. Then for the next two rounds, just to, we're making uh, the size of the band now. So you can go as thick as you want once you have the right size. So you could do two more rows, making it five rows of a rim or, you know, do another one and, and add six or seven. But you're going to be doing a row of single crochets over the other side of the chain here, which will give you six rows total for the rim. So just keep that in mind when you're deciding how thick you want. It's automatically going to be six rows. So for this row, which is round um, four, and also the next round, 
you're just going to be putting one single crochet in each stitch around. Okay, when you've reached the last stitch on round five, you want to slip stitch in the beginning stitch of the round, and then chain one. And now, what I like to do to give my uh, hat a nice finish is I like to do the reverse single crochet or the crab stitch. You can call it either either one. And what it is is you're going to be doing like a single crochet like you normally would pull up a loop pull through both loops the only difference is you're going to be working the opposite direction so you're going to be going back to the stitches that you just made and it changes your hook and the way you grab the, the yarn slightly so it just takes time to get used to what you want to do is go into the next stitch like you normally would if you were going this direction and then grab and pull some yarn through that stitch and now you can see you have two loops on your hook and then you just yarn over and pull through those two hook two loops like you would a normal single crochet the only difference just to get used to grabbing the yarn it's easy enough to put your hook inside the next stitch and then I just kind of I'm holding my yarn like I usually do just grab it to the side and pull it through just pull it up like this and then pull through two and you want to continue to do this with each stitch all the way around and if you feel like your hat is kind of getting a kind of a warped kind of stretched look on the end and not staying uniform with just this pretty border around it you can prevent that from happening if you just skip a stitch every so often if you feel like it's starting to get that stretched look then just skip a stitch maybe do five reverse single crochets normally in each stitch and then at, on the sixth one maybe you just skip one stitch and then work it into the next so maybe do that every you know five and then six to one skip a stitch and it will reduce your rim slightly and prevent it from getting that stretched look I just want to show you what the stitch looks like you can see that has kind of a bumpy look going and this will be all the way around the hat. It will give it a nice look so that you can't actually see the stitches anymore. So continue that all the way around. And when you get to the last stitch, which would be your beginning stitch here, I'll show you how to finish the round. Okay. Now, just in my last reverse single crochet here, and this was my very first, where I slipped stitch into chain one, and then I did my first crab stitch. So you want to slip stitch in this beginning stitch. So you're just going to go into the next stitch, grab up some yarn, pull up, slip stitch, and you'll chain one and cut your yarn. Cut it long enough to where you can work in your tail with a tapestry needle. Because you don't want to have any tails sticking out the front of the hat where it's the most noticeable because people are wearing it on their head. So what I do is I thread my tapestry needle and I turn where the back is facing me and I just follow down my crab stitches. Four or five crab stitches. And I'll pull my yarn through. And you can pull it to tighten this area here in between and then just slightly tug it and then you want to cut any excess yarn that you have now like I told you before we're going to now this is the bottom this is our original chain we're now going to be working in the other side of the chain 
Okay, I decided for my little swatch here to show you, since I have a video where I show you how to do the brim of the hat. So once you've done your brim, and here's where I ended my last crab stitch row, you're going to flip it over and start working the other side of your chain now. And if you used your secondary color, like this, like I did on this this one, I'm using my secondary color, then you want to start the first row here with your with your main color. But if you've already been working with your main color this whole time, just when you flip it on this side, keep with your main color. But if you started with your secondary color, you want to go ahead and switch to your main color for this one row. So since I started with my secondary color, I'm going to go ahead and... What you're doing is, this is the other side of your chain. You worked one side of it and now you have this other side. You have uh, single loops. I'm going to be working in these single loops. I'm going to attach my main color by using a single cro uh, crochet attachment. I just insert my needle in the stitch that I'm using. Then I'm just going to pull up a loop instead of pulling it through my loop to make a slip stitch. I'm just going to pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two loops to make my first single crochet. And then now working in the single loops we're going to be putting one single crochet in each of those stitches. As you can see, I'm just working with the single, the single uh, chain. And you had an original chain of 70. You can make an adult hat. So stick with that. When you get to the end, you should still have 70 stitches. Okay, I got back up to my beginning again. And again, I want to stress that if you've done your main color, this whole uh, rim, there's no need to switch for this row. You just flip it over and start again with the same color. This is only if you did a secondary color for your rim. So what I want to do is I'm going to slip stitch in the beginning stitch. And then I'm going to be grabbing my secondary color now. There's no need to cut your yarn. You're just going to be switching from one to the next. So what I do is I fold my yarn in half like this. And then I just grab it with my hook and pull it through my loop. And then all you have to do to secure it is just to pull the string of your other color to tighten it. Now you have a tight loop here. Now we're going to be doing double crochet so I'm going to chain one. You can chain two if you like. It doesn't really matter. But I think I'm just going to chain one. And go right back into the same stitch that you just slip stitched into. Which can be hard to see. There we go. Now when you get to the end of your row, you can see how they're all so uniform. But when you got to the end of your row, which I'll show you just here, you can slightly tell. See how the birds kind of look like they have a broken wing. But it's okay. It's not so noticeable to the untrained eye. So keep going. What you do for this first set is chain two. So you have a double crochet and then chain two. Now you want to skip two stitches. So you have one, two. And in this third stitch you want to put a double crochet. And then you want to chain two. You want to skip two stitches again. 
one, two, and then the third stitch, put a double crochet. You'll be repeating this all the way around. Double crochet, skip two stitches, chain two, and then double crochet. And then you'll chain two after every double crochet, and you'll skip two stitches before making your next double crochet. So I made my double crochet. So now I want to chain two, skip two stitches, and then double crochet. And you want to continue this all the way around till you get back up to the beginning again. 